Hello, this is Noah Cockett and a review. Now this mandolin isn't the uh, star of the review today because it's old and I don't know who made it. Pardon me, which probably means that I shouldn't review it because it's probably quite rare that someone else on the YouTube will <laughs> the YouTube um, will will encounter this you know one of the same maker. I found it in a guitar shop, which I'm not really fond of. I don't like mandolins just being clubbed together with guitars as fretted stringy instruments, you know. Uh, but anyway, I found it in a guitar shop. It's got a little bit of damage here where the, um, I don't know, this ring has fallen down a bit, you know, it's been pressed and broken a bit. And I, I intend to repair that at some point. Not me personally, you understand. I intend to get it repaired. And this, as a, as a sort of, snap in the varnish, which I don't know. It is reparable, I imagine. It's just uh, when I get the money, you know? Um, but I saw it in the window, and I just really liked it, actually. I used to have... I used to have a, a ball back mandolin. Um, this is you on the back. Um, I'm fairly sure it's you anyway. It looks to me as if it were you. Um, and I know that you was a common material we used for the backing. So I would, I would, I would think, but I don't know. Um, I used to have a ball back mandolin and it broke because it had been just glued back together here. It had broken one time, a long time ago, and the person who owned it had just super glued it back together which meant that as soon as you tuned it up properly the neck went like this came forward and snapped um, and obviously when I got it they didn't tell me this so yes and that was you know a lot more to repair and to find a new one uh, so it's been on my it's been on a list of things I wanted to find again for a while um, however, I can review the Viking mandolin case as sold in Hobgoblin stores. Now, some of you will notice that I uh, I buy a lot of things from Hobgoblin, uh, and that's because in general they're cheap, but good quality. Um, so I've had this in London for a couple of months now. And that is the only damage, um, which is completely reparable. I can re-glue that, just I don't have any super glue at the moment. But I, I could fix that. Um, nice fittings that hold together well. Um, and inside, nice, um, yeah, ni nice lining. Uh, my mandolin's a bit small, so I've padded it out with a scarf and a Green Day cushion that I made in year six. Um, I think this was about 50, 60 pounds, um, but well worth it. But the real review is this whistle. It's a Philip Bleasy D whistle, a uh, high D whistle. Um, now this took two weeks to play in. I played it for 10 minutes every day in the first week. And then uh, for 20 minutes every day in the second week. Um, and I found that the playing in was just you really learning to love your instrument, actually. Um, it requires a fair amount of care. Every time I stop playing it, I will clean it with this cleaner that I bought at Towsy Folk Festival. Um, it's just a standard tin whistle cleaner, as far as I know. Um, but yes, I've got this one and this one. And when I'm oiling it, I use the one that's got green on it. And when I'm not oiling it, I use this one. And the oiling is just a simple process. I use the Almond Oil by Newmark that you can buy in pretty much any pharmacy. It was recommended to me by the maker, Philip Bleasy. And basically you just open it, dip, and then insert into the whistle and sort of, you know, move about a bit until you can see that there's, there's a bit of, you know, until you can see that it's in there and then you 
you clean it out, you clean all the sort of all the excess with this. And after every time you play, I clean it with this as well to make sure that any spit and things like that don't get, don't damage it. So you may notice that it's out here. Um, it's uh, so that's true D. I'm playing. That that's a perfect D. I've just checked it. Um, and if it comes out wrong on your computer or phone or iPod, I'm sorry. Um, but I I just tuned it. Um, so at least in the flesh, it's 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 a real D. It's a true D. Um, some people will play it. You know not on the true D, um, and you can tune it to sessions as well, so if you're playing with a box or a concertina, concertina, that's it, concertina, if you're playing with a box or a concertina or an accordion or a melodeon, um, which are sort of internal tuned instruments, uh, yes, you can tune to them and it's really useful, but you should probably hear it first. Um, yeah, as you can tell, I'm not great with my upper Ds yet. Um, because you, it, it's, it's a standard thing that I just haven't got out the habit of. So it's... Or, I, I, th I think there's another one. Um, so yeah, there's a sharp there. Sorry, I'm messing about now. Um, but yeah, you, uh, on the sheet that Philip Bleasy will send you, uh, is how he recommends to play it, not because that's much more difficult. Um, but as some of you who've been watching the channel for a while will know, I've been learning on generations and, um, and things like that, which sort of don't care about your fingering as much. Um... And I'm I'm not I'm not an amazing whistler yet. Um, I bought this whistle because I really loved playing it. I've played similar whistles at lots of different festivals. Um, I pl I've played one for about three festivals, you know, three Towsies, and I wanted to get one. And then the last draw was I saw it at the the. The um, Greenwich, Greenwich Early Music Festival, where I got the uh, medieval fiddle, and I decided that I was going to get one. So I've been saving up. This one is made of Mopani, I think. It's a, it's an it's a black. It, it, it's a um, um, it's a black wood, like a uh, hardwood. Yeah, it, it's a hardwood. Um, it's quite dark, um, but it plays really well. You don't have to oil it too much. I oil this once every two weeks. Um, it's quite loud. But you know, it has a good, it has a fairly good upper octave as well. And then I can't reach the uh, top octave. I can't reach that really top because I don't want to, uh, you know, breathe too hard on it. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm getting there. I, I'm I'm getting there with my playing. Uh, but I love this. I love this instrument. I think I think they're really top quality, and I I, I love it. Um, so you know what I will do now that I've played it is sort of so this goes in. I just sort of twist it about. Trying, uh, you know, as I'm pulling out, pulling out the uh, the cleaner, I'm twisting to try and get as much of my whatever's in there out. Um, I'll play it when it's closed as well.
really love it. Um, and also, you get a lovely little bag. Um, like a case. Well, yeah, it is a case. But it, it's really nice. It's, um, it's got his name on it here. Um, and I think it's felt, but it, it's not sort of flimsy felt. It's a really nice, sturdy, sturdy thing. And then all you have to do is slip, slip it back in. And there it is. Upside down. There it is. Thank you for watching.